Hi and welcome back to this course on Memories in VLSI. This video will be a short introduction on SRAM. In the previous video, we have seen the classification of read-write memory and we have understood that SRAM and DRAM are the main important memories uh, which lies under read-write memories. So without wasting time, let's get started with the introduction to SRAM. Note that this will be just an introduction to SRAM. We will understand the SRAM cell and uh, many of its properties such as its array structure and how the cells are written and uh, many other operations in further videos. Since it's a large topic to discuss, uh, I have to split into multiple videos. So what is SRAM? SRAM or static RAM uses internal feedback that retains its values as long as the power, power is applied. And that's the reason why it is called as a volatile memory. A volatile in the sense we remove the power, the memory is lost. So it is told static because that there is no refresh uh, needed. What do, we, what do I mean by refresh? If we understand DRAM, there we need to refresh the data once it is written into the memory we need to refresh that data uh, within few nanoseconds or something so that kind of dynamic refresh is not needed for this memory and that's the reason why it is static because once you write into the memory its static state will keep it or the data will be kept in its uh, static state SRAM contributes to the highest amount of transistors in today's SOCs. It may uh, contribute to the 80% of the transistors in the entire SOC. SRAM is the most popularly used memory in today's computer ar architecture. And why it is, we need to understand that. It's because some of its attractive properties, such as it is denser than flip-flops. Yes, flip-flops are a little faster than SRAMs, but the SRAMs are much, much denser than that of the flip-flops because flip-flops will have two latches uh, and these latches are made up of at least six transistors, okay? Now, the entire SRAM is made out of six transistors, which is like half the size of uh, the flip-flop. And this is an uh, SRAM cell, as you can see, which is also called a 60 SRAM cell. And this is some kind of array structure which I've shown uh, as part of layout. So the second attractive property is that it is compatible with standard CMOS process, whereas DRAM is not. Because DRAM requires some kind of capacitor and that capacitor is not compatible with standard CMOS process. That does not mean we cannot manufacture it at all. Uh, there are complications to it and uh, your standard CMOS process will degrade if we use uh, DRAM in the same uh, chip or something. So this is much better than that because this is compatible with the standard CMOS process. The third one is that it is faster than DRAM. It's much faster than DRAM because of its uh, structure and it is easier to use than DRAM because DRAM has its own complications because of its refresh function and other things. So we use SRAM in many applications such as caches, register files, tables, and uh, scratch pad buffers. And most of it, uh, such as caches or register files, are used inside the CPU uh, because uh, it's much faster. The CPU runs much faster than that of the outer periphery. And some of the scratch pad buffers and all are, they might be needed for uh, some very uh, high speed uh, functionality. SRAM consists of array of memory cells with row and column circuitry. So that architecture is its own array architecture. We will see that in uh, further videos. So that's all for now in this video, uh, which is introduction to SRAM. Thanks a lot for watching. I'll see you in the next video and bye-bye.